Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. And I'm Doug Carmen. Welcome to the show. We are so excited to have Carrie Stenson, publisher and editor of a new magazine called Edible Silicon Valley that helps connect people with the food that they eat. New exciting produce and farmers markers are popping up all over the place, and today we will find out about some of the latest food trends. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you so okay. much. You started your magazine about a year ago. What was the motivation and primarily, what is your mission? Uh, well, the motivation, I, I was a former lawyer and I've worked a lot in the community and I was looking for something that I felt was giving back to the community and that was oriented with food and kind of being healthy and thinking about where your food comes from. So it was really a perfect fit. And um, there's edible publications all across the country and um, that were really motivating and inspiring and have actually help change the landscape of food in their regions, so. Wow. Well, your articles are engaging and well-written, so where do you get the writers? Thank you. We are fortunate in Silicon Valley. There's a lot of smart people who are really inspired by food, and there's, um, with the internet today and all kinds of food blogging, and it, it's kind of a funny story. When we first started, we thought, oh my gosh, how are we gonna find writers so we created this wish list and sure enough every single person on there has now written for the magazine so it's been kind of a fun full circle experience that we've had so they more or less find you is that what you're writers saying? writers have found us and they just check in and say we're so happy they either knew about the concept of an edible publication before or they somehow came in contact with edible silicon valley and they reach out and are really want to get involved and share the stories of our local businesses. So what are some of the favorite articles that you've had from past issues? What so I'm many. finding, which is uh, something I was not really expecting, is that in Silicon Valley there are so many stories. And there are from farmers to incredible restaurants and chefs that are being creative farmers markets of course and um, technology which is in bringing food kind of to the fore and <clears throat> while Silicon Valley has always been a technology hub it's now becoming this really interesting ag tech hub where companies are popping up and it's of course bringing food to the table which is what's what we find important um, so we <clears throat> Some of my favorite articles are talking about different types of farming. So for example, we kind of uncovered this farm in the Half Moon Bay area in the summer issue last year, and it's called Ouroboros Farm, and they do aquaponics, oh, which is really a whole new way of farming with water oh, uh -huh. and using fish to pretty much fertilize the mm -hmm. vegetables organically. So it's very intriguing. It can be done indoors. Uh, weather is not necessarily play a part in aquaponics. So that was really fascinating and intriguing to me. Another story uh, that I actually wrote myself because it was so such kind of the whole reason why we did Edible, we were approached by the uh, Santa Clara County Farm Bureau and they wanted to host their first farm to table dinner and as a fundraiser for the Farm Bureau, and they just called us and said, it seems like you're really connected and we love what you're doing, and is there, can you help us organize this? So, so we did a lot of work to help organize this dinner, which ended up being, I think, over 250 people, and we pulled this local company called Epicurean Group, which is a corporate management, food management business, and they do all local, all organic, and they, they pulled, sh and they had one steer. So the Farm Bureau said, we have one thing. We've got a steer that we got from the Santa Clara County Fair, and we want to use it. So they were thinking, hmm, 250 people and one steer. How do we oh. do that? And so I thought it was so awesome what they did. They got seven chefs, and each chef had a different part of the steer, and they curated a whole menu around that part of the steer, and so it was all, of course, you know, family-style tables, and each table had a different 
menu. And it was really awesome to see that all come to work and the chefs were so into it and everybody was there was supporting farming and that's one of my favorites because of the experience. Oh, yes. Now, what did you have to do? Look busy? No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, <laughs> I um, actually or brought the chefs to the table yeah. and introduced them to yeah. the Farm Bureau. They did it as a donation, the entire oh. dinner. Oh, nice. And we got Gordon Biersch to donate beer, and we had oh, all of the <laughs> cooking appliances donated from Meyer's Appliance, and it we we actually did a lot of the legwork wow. and showed up and wrote the story and took all the photos which are gorgeous so you're mm -hmm. really involving so many people in the community and each and this is a quarterly right it's a quarterly it's yes. a quarterly so i imagine it takes that much time to put out the next issue to do all the legwork and everything the planning that you have to do it sounds like it's tremendous it is this. it is and right now for us quarterly is great it's seasonal we can really focus on the season and really get geared up for the next magazine throughout mm -hmm. the quarter we're going to mm -hmm. events constantly going to dinners and media events I just went to a really interesting art show at the Tech Museum in San Jose that it's called the modernist cuisine and he is a uh, former Microsoft executive who's now doing photography that is mm. stunning and unique. And it's kind of putting together the art of cooking and, and the science of cooking. But and it's focused on cooking. It's right? focused yes. on food well, and yeah. cooking. And yeah, it's his, his uh, photography primarily. Is photography. Well, sure. kind of, kind yeah, of, yeah, it's really beautiful. And it's free to the public. So mm -hmm. I would recommend everybody check it out. Um, so, yeah, we're keeping really busy and it, it definitely takes a full three months to get a magazine out. I know that from very starting. I think I decided to do Edible in October and we published our first magazine on January 1st, 2013. Wow. <laughs> so so it's a process. In October uh, 2012. Then, That's right. It? That's right. And wow. so 2013 was our first issue and um, ever since and that was a, that's another thing I really love about what we've done so for the very first issue uh, I don't came up with the idea of featuring local artists and so with this cover we have Rob we'll Biltman which is a really unique way of doing the art uh, if anybody's interested they should look into it but in a nutshell he electrocutes the vegetable and <laughs> um, there's no there's no photography involved here and it's kind of blueprints, and it's just really, really fascinating. So this is an artichoke. So it reflects the technology in this area. It's, so it's you very Silicon like Valley. Food and the technology <laughs> that. And it's oh, been a fun really? theme to carry forward. Then our next issue, uh, I found I really wanted to do something with cherries because some of these, some of these produce items are so temporary. And you know, just to capture them in their moment is really extraordinary. So um, we we found a really gorgeous, gorgeous photographer, and he did the next one, and it's just kind of been going along like that. This this summer issue, yeah, that's the one. Is uh, that. just a, it's a painting of a hot chili pepper, which was in its wow. prime during the summer, and uh, there's interesting story around peppers actually in East Palo Alto there's a huge farm which I never even knew about and it's been here for ages and it was built to source San Francisco um, so it's so still standing on that and this is in your summer yes yeah. and we talk about the that farmer in this issue as well wow. so it's it was again I'm learning something every single time about what's going on in our own region so it's it's a lot of fun Oh, this is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, the artwork is really nice. Now, getting back to your writers, do you have repeat writers that want to write for each issue, or how does that go? Yeah, so we have had writers approach us on that, and uh, at, at first we were kind of just trying to keep the door open, and now we have, I would say, two writers who we have on board to do very specific types of articles and otherwise we come up with a whole editorial calendar and think about what kind of touch and feel or what I really like is for writers to pitch stories to us because that mm -hmm. means that they're feeling something about it. 
Um, so we have a fun in, I believe it's in the spring issue that you first held up. We also like to do agritourism and give people ideas that they never even thought about that you can explore in our own region. So we have one on crabbing in Pacifica. Huh. And I ha had no idea. Uh, um, so it's fun to hear from writers. Wow. Yes. Well, you, you brought some of your, uh, some local produce uh, for us to, uh, to uh, see. Yeah. yeah. We sure and, have. And uh, you have it on the table. And I understand some of it is grown in your own garden. And I'm really fascinated to find out about that and yeah. how you use some of the, your, your produce to for the local restaurant so we want to hear about that but first let's go Great. over let's and go over and check it out we yeah, brought so a couple is. things so i'd like to introduce both uh, jane monroe and megan gabar who work with edible Hi. silicon Hello. valley Hi. and Hi, they guys. came to just help us make a simple summer salad mm. a lot of uh, which is sourced in our garden. Um, lettuces are pretty easy to grow, actually. Are they? Well, it's not easy to grow organically. I will say that is a commitment, but one well worth pursuing. Um, basil, stone fruit is clearly in season right now. In fact, my dog is a little bit overweight <laughs> because she's jumping up in the tree and yeah, just really? devouring it. Plums? So these plums? are from your, your garden. They are. Garden. They are. Oh. So plums and apricots are oh. in absolute prime and almost on their way oh. out. This is kind oh. of <laughs> what, it, it's a love-hate relationship because you love them so much when you try them and then they're gone. <laughs> but the dog, I, I have... That's new. Apples, I, I could understand. Oh, she eats apples. She eats <laughs> any kind. Actually, she also was eating so much from the veggie garden, it's now fenced. <laughs> yeah, so we have a, a veggie-loving dog. How much dogs. do you have for um, garden? Our garden is probably uh, about a third of an acre, which is large. It, it's, I actually think it's a small farm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so but, mostly in the ground, or do you like pots? They, it, they are in beds. We have one bed right now that's all tomatoes and it's 80 feet long. Wow. It's that's enormous. A lot it's a but lot then of again, tomatoes. You know, you have a restaurant that you. We do. Should. It's really wonderful. We have the Woodside Bakery, is mm -hmm. um, just very close to where we live, and they have made a decision to have two farms in Woodside right now, and mm -hmm. we're the lucky recipient of one of them. So it's kind of a a win-win situation and oh. they manage the produce and I had dinner there last night <laughs> and I have to say it's funny to have dinner with your own food at a restaurant but it's, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's worth it. It's oh, worth it. So, so that works minute, that right? works great. And I actually think that restaurants would really benefit from this type of program. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you know of any other restaurants that are doing this, or is this just a Not challenge? really. I mean, I know that Manresa has a, a great relationship with Love Apple Farms, and they do a, a lot there. And I know that a lot of restaurants, um, the Rosewood Madeira restaurant has a little bit of produce on their property. So they're kind of coming along. But as far as actually using a local resident's property, yeah. I, I haven't seen that frequently. But... It's on the rise. We're yeah. trend starters here. And, so, and the YouTube garden uh, People can as well. read more about this in, your, in the magazine, about yes. how this progresses. Yeah, yeah and I also, think that's a fascinating concept. We yeah. do have an article, I, I believe, again, in the spring issue on urban farming. So it'll give people ideas and motivation to have their own raised beds. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter really what space you have. You just make it work, whether it's an herb garden or lettuces or, you know, what your favorite thing is. It's, it's really a fun pursuit. It's nice to have them raised too. How about uh, how about you two? Do you grow anything? Well, I'm actually lucky enough to get to go play in Carrie's small yeah. farm. Yeah. Uh, whenever we have meetings, we can kind of hop so down there, there and, and turn the take a little nibble, have a little. snack, <laughs> see what see what's uh, growing fresh, what's coming in, what's next. It's so, fun. what would really, you say is experience. easy? Now, you mentioned like lettuces and things like that. I I don't remember trying that before. Um, I love lettuces. Consider? I feel like you can just kind of take what you need and then they reappear. Same with Swiss mm -hmm. chard. Uh, herbs are, I mean, yeah. the basil yeah. is all That's... over the place. <laughs> oh, the mint, you almost, you have to, if mint. you do mint, oh. you have to contain it 
because mm -hmm. it's considered a weed and it, it will it yeah. filtrate everything else. Yeah. So herbs are a great way to get started and you really feel like you're doing something. There's nothing better than walking out, cutting it, and then preparing it. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is special. You gotta watch out for that zucchini. Do you remember? <laughs> I just gonna mention yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we neighbors be <laughs> running. Uh oh, here they come with their zucchini, and They're I would so actually, I they would grow, yeah. and we actually took them to feed the deer. Yeah. Uh, there was a park that you used to the be Madonna, able to go to Madonna, and, and feed know. them the zucchini. They appreciated it. <laughs> I'm sure they sure did. They did. I, that's that is one of the challenges with having your own garden. Yeah. Is under understanding quantities <laughs> and what you are actually going to use yourself. Yeah. I mean, in, in where we live, a lot of our friends have gardens, so people barter. I mean, it's oh, really, yes. it's really Good old idea. school. It really is old like, school. Yeah. And, but, but so, definitely, I mean, we did zucchini <laughs> and I made zucchini bread over and uh -huh, over and then uh -huh. I was done. I did not want more zucchini bread. Yeah. So, well, the kids just, would say, is it made with, no matter what I tried to trick them with, is it made with zucchini? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're ever Everything. trying to change up your zucchini recipe, yeah. this is actually one of my favorite tools to oh, use really? for cooking. It's a vegetable spiraler, and I make raw zucchini salads with it all the time. Oh. Um, you would stick a zucchini in here, and it makes like spaghetti noodles, and you oh, can make a raw nice. salad. So you twist it, or? Yeah, you twist it, and today we thought it, it would be fun to show you um, what it would look like to spiral some fruit in case you wanted to top a cheesecake with strawberries yeah. or, you know, a plum cake with some plum shreds. Oh, look, there it so, is. So, yeah, it spirals like this. Wow. You can imagine with a zucchini to make a oh, whole yeah. raw salad like this, it's absolutely oh. delicious. You throw on, you know, your favorite oh, dressing neat. and it's yes. done. That's oh, it. Oh, that is neat. So and this is one of our favorite that's great no, tools. Like that's strong. a great tool because eating raw vegetables is amazing health-wise, it's easy to prepare, there's so much you can do with it, um, and they come in bigger sizes if you're, you know, looking for a more industrial type meal, yeah. um, but well, it's, it's I've really unique. I've never seen that before, unique. so it's a spiral, it's uh, shred, what would you call it, a shredder? A spiraler. Spiral, spiral. They were called a spiraler, a spiralizer. Spiral this one is called a. This a, is a gefu. gefu. And you can, oh, neat. So you can get them in the most. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, Latab, Amazon, online. Oh, I'll have to yeah. get Do it for garnish on your salad. If you're going to add radish or something on top, um, people will be very impressed. Oh. So tell us now what's in the salad? What do you have going on here? So this salad is from our latest issue, summer 2014, and it's a recipe from the Rosewood, which is one of our favorite restaurants because the ambiance is so amazing, and especially in the summer when you can go sit by the pool on the patio. Um, so this salad is near and dear to our hearts. So we wanted to so demo it today. Like all organic vegetables. And all that organic, yeah. all local when possible. Uh, they really restaurants in Silicon Valley are really stepping up to the plate. They are. They are. Definitely. So, yeah, we're, we're really happy to, to say that. So we asked, um, Madeira Ooh. is the restaurant at Rosewood, and um, they, mm. they really do a great job. And so we asked them for a fun, simple summer salad with local ingredients, and this is the recipe they gave us. So that's okay. what we're sharing. So you start out with mixed greens of Some baby, baby lettuce. Spring, mm -hmm. spring mm -hmm. mix, I think they call that. And I see the arugula. I don't want to touch it, but anyway, arugula. And what else? She knows her vegetables. Well, I know arugula. Just and mix red just lettuces. Maybe and spinach, if you'd like. Yeah. I mean, any baby lettuces the recipe okay. calls for. Whatever Especially if you don't like chopping, baby lettuces are oh, great. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so one of the fun things about this salad, or in many, many salads, is you can actually prepare a lot in advance. And, you know, then when your dinner party is about to happen, or you're, you're not so kind of all over the place. So that's kind of why we did this. And yeah, one thing we did in advance is the roasted tomatoes. Yes, you chop, that looks different, yes. Yeah, you chop cherry tomatoes in half, um, marinate them with olive oil and salt and pepper, and then you bake them on so, 200 for three hours. Oh, so they so slowly three roast. Hours. I have to ask why three hours? It's a slow roast. Slow Because you're baking it on a low heat. And Very that, low what heat? does that do? Low? I'm thinking it just kind of draws out the juices but doesn't dry them out. Mm -hmm. It just makes it, if you do it too fast, 
then um, you maybe burn it or mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. take out the yummy flavors. So it just draws out the flavors. Uh, uh. Yeah, so uh, the kind of directions for the salad is you actually, they recommend that you toss the dressing with the greens and then you kind of add more stuff in. So, mm. Megs, would you like to do the honors? I so would love to do the girl. honors. <laughs> so this is another fine little tool. Um, I, I don't have the spiraler in there right now because I had already mixed it, but mixing your dressing and then putting it in and then this just kind of spirals it and it's ready to go. And the dressing is? The dressing is olive oil and I we brought this for Antoyo Grove mm. because this is our really only local olive oil that's grown and made in Silicon Valley. Mm. And oh. uh, it's absolutely delicious. And it has a, a sherry vinegar and shallots and garlic and salt and pepper, of course. And parsley. Which oh. you can smell. And fresh chopped <laughs> parsley also from the garden. It smells great. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you and some they Dijon. Can't smell it out there. And some Dijon mustard as well. This oh. is, yeah, I thought that you put everything in there, then you mix it. But you do it. You actually, it's better to put your dressing in before you put your other uh, You don't want to mush ingredient. everything up in Just there, right? In the greens, yeah. mm -hmm. oh. Because yeah. this is already seasoned a little bit. Those are and seasoned, and also you don't want to mush the croutons. True, mm -hmm. true. And um, Megan can yeah. talk a little bit more about the papaya and avocado. Yeah, sure. Wow. Well, first wow. we're going to put in the roasted tomatoes and cucumber. Were the uh, cu the cucumbers? They weren't roasted though. The tomatoes. They were no, not. No, yeah. and yeah. cucumbers yeah. are great for again prepping in advance because you can chop them and then leave them in the fridge in a nice mm. um, glass Tupperware and they'll stay great. <laughs> and it smells so delicious. It does. <laughs> so then, what's Alba, in this dish Alba is Alba half of a avocado. Yes, you. Half of a papaya and an avocado topped with lime and cayenne pepper. So it gives it a little kick and a little tangy tropical mm. flair. Mm. So the recipe also, you can have shrimp in here. Sure. Um, sure. But we just kind of just stuck with vegetarian. One little protein. Yes. You know, Another thing protein. you can do is, which I do all the time with my salads, is toast some almonds mm -hmm. or Good kind of a, a type of nut that goes with the flavor of the salad. And then you would toss that in after with the croutons as well. Mm -hmm. For an and extra the last, crunch. The, the croutons. Yep. Yeah, so these croutons, it's just a baguette cut up with some thyme and garlic and salt and pepper and olive oil. You just bake it, you can make them in advance. And this so is the... So you don't open the package. No. No, no, no these are no, homemade. No, no. <laughs> don't open the package. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> and actually, uh, Megan was able to pick up the baguette from a local farmer's market. Oftentimes oh, at our local farmer's markets, there'll be bakers, nice. there's all kinds of purveyors of food. It's not only farmers. Yeah. So you can yeah. really go and get a lot of your grocery shopping done. It's pretty wow. exciting. Yeah, that's another interesting point, is there the cottage food law that was passed in mm -hmm. California, which has given artisans really a place to create their foods within you know under a small parameter of small growing their quantities, business yeah. small quantities in their own kitchen whereas before if you were going to sell commercially mm. you, oh. you know, it was a no no yeah, yeah. so you now have... small artisans are making food in their own kitchens and I they're didn't, selling it I didn't it. realize that I thought when did that really come about the cottage commercial. food law I I kind of think it's in one of the magazines and it was either summer or spring of last year maybe summer but uh -huh. it, um, it's definitely, I mean, we go to the farmer's market and you see all kinds of new artisan foods that were not previously I, there. Really well, beautiful. I've noticed that too, but I really never thought about it. I mean, I just, I didn't realize that there was a law that passed that they could do this. Yeah, yep. Just, you know. It's and it's gorgeous. really changed lives for people who, you know, want to sure. just see if it's if it's something that will sell in the market, right? And then they can experiment in their own kitchen, and then of course they can scale with a commercial kitchen if sure. that becomes if necessary. Yeah. Now I noticed this over here, and I've been smelling the basil. So what do we have over here? Yeah. This like a... We thought we would make a basil lemonade since it is summer, and um, this lemonade recipe wow. calls for a basil lemon simple syrup where you take four cups of basil, two cups of sugar, some lemon zest and water, and you boil it, and then you let it sit for a couple of hours. And then you add the fresh lemon juice and water and put it in a reusable mason jar with a festive straw, and you're ready for a picnic or 
So how long barbecue. do you boil it? How long? The syrup. Um, right when it boils, you turn the heat off and then you let oh, it sit for a couple of hours. Yeah, you Just don't want to burn sugar. the sugar. And the other oh, cool yeah. thing <laughs> about simple syrup is if you, you know, I'm kind of a batch maker because if I'm going to make something, I like to use it as, you know, have many uses as possible. Sure. So simple, simple syrup, which is great for lemonade, is also great for cocktails if you're making that or just a variety of drinks. So you don't, you know, don't just stick with the amount that you need for the lemonade. Just mm -hmm. make as much as you think you might be using over the next week. Ah, ah. Now, let's see, you have some uh, urban market bags that you've actually designed this. Yeah, um, so this is another, what I would call food trend, and especially in California, is that bringing your own bags to the store has now become not just a, a not just a good yeah. thing to do, but a necessity. It has to. You know, and um, so we have this great product of this, this sack comes with six bags in it, and these bags are large, they are durable, they can hold wow. a lot, and they wash, they machine Ooh. wash. Nylon? So they're, they're a suplex nylon, so they're mm -hmm. super strong. Wow. And when every time we go to the store, the people checking our bags talk about how, you know, it's kind of people come through with dirty, crusty bags yes. that are not yes. washable. Oh. These are <laughs> absolutely fabulous. We have two different versions. So there's the six pack and the three pack. And in the three pack, the handles are just a tad longer so that you can sling them over your shoulder. So they're really great for farmer's markets or wow. going to the mall. How tiny that is. It's Look tiny. That. There's three bags in there. <laughs> So well, they fit in the cup holder of your car uh -huh. so that you never forget them. Well, if, if somebody wants to find out about this, they can go to your Urbanmarketbags.com, yeah. absolutely. Yes, yeah. and um, yeah. these, oh, these are, are great. are real popular and fun to use, and people like to color code what I they put in. I can't believe that we've run out of time. I had so much <laughs> more that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I know. Next time, I want to oh. thank you for watching the show, and please go out there and eat your veggies because it's good for you. Yes. So check the website for detail, and thank you for watching the show, and watch again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.